So on behalf of Christy and myself and all of the Sanctuary Church, would you please welcome Cheryl Salem to the platform. Miracles are here for you. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water when you believe. I believe. Ebo kosona ria mo kosone, eria mo sona ria homo, seria po kosore ama, se amo soria mo kasitia, le bo sorie. I am here to bring you all you need. Won't you come and rest at my feet? My healing hand is here for you. Just the touch of my finger, it can heal you. So worship me, my daughter, worship me. Cover my feet with your tears right now. Worship me, my daughter, worship me. Just bow before me now and let me heal you. I'll feel you to overflowing. I'll pour my spirit through you. You'll know that I am with you. For out of your belly will flow my power. Come, receive all that I have for you, child. Don't turn away. Don't back away, just stay, stay, stay. My healing power is flowing right now. My healing power is flowing right now. Right now, God is touching you in the very depths of your womb. Right here in the very depth of your womb. That's the first place I see his hand going. Right to this area. Put your hand on your belly if you need healing. In your abdominal area, in your female region. In the womb, a, a twisted, tilted, curved position inside of you is about to become straight. A fallopian tube that's been so pinched, nothing could come through it. God is... Blowing his air of Ruach right through so that from the womb to the ovary is full passageway right now. I see tumors in the womb dissolving right now in the name of Jesus. Dissolving by the fire of the presence of God. Tilted out of position, womb straightening up. Standing. Having done all the crisis demands, womb, stand. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for your power. Migraine headaches, the back side of the left, the left side of the neck, God is healing right now. All the way. The, the last, I'm listening to the Spirit of God, the last 
migraine headache you had is the last migraine headache you'll have. Depression. When we were worshiping, I saw a cloud of depression that you brought in being pushed back by the Shekinah glory of God. Women, woman after woman after woman after woman, I saw you brought this cloud that's been trying to oppress you, trying to take you over. But the glory of God, Shekinah of God, is coming forth from the altar, making its way to the back where it's not going to be left on you in the name of Jesus. Believe and receive what God has to do for you. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Curvature in the spine, a crooked spine. God started saying this about 6.30 this morning. I'm making every crooked place straight. I'm making every crooked place straight. Every crooked place straight. From your mind, depression causes your mind to be in a crooked place. But God is making a portal with a straight path, straight to his feet. Cast up your highway of praise. Cast up your highway of praise. Build an old ramp to the glory of God. Build an old ramp to the glory of God with your praise. We praise you, we praise you, we praise you, we praise you, we praise you. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice. It's not about anybody but him right now. To worship you, oh, my soul, rejoice. Take joy, my King. Take joy in our worship, Lord. In what you hear, is Sunda City. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in You have your prayer language. Worship him in spirit. Jesus said, the Father seeks worshipers who worship him in spirit. Worship him in spirit. So Sing it in English. Listen, Lucia. Sing it in English. Sing it again. I love you. And I Oh, my soul. Rejoice. 
than even you knew. Every pain and broken place you've come through has set the course for victory before you. So don't be afraid of even those things you've hidden For I'll bring my glory forth from every broken place Let me pour through even those things you've hidden And you'll see my glory Greater than before Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. I'm imparting it to you now. The presence of the Lord will bring healing in your voice. When you sing, I'll receive the glory. And I'll pour my power through you on every doorway me. Sing for my glory like never before. Sing for my glory. Sing for my glory. And more. He's saying, what you thought was unfruitful, I say, fruitful, 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 fruitful. It's not unfruitful, it's fruitful. Fruitful, 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 fruitful. So much more. So much more. Glory to God. Glory to God. I have a word from heaven. I want to get it to you. We can stay right there all day. (laughs) You know, the beautiful thing about the Spirit of God is He doesn't come on you and get off of you because He lives in you. Old Testament, He got on you and then lifted off of you. But if you wait for Him to lift off of you, you'll never move from where you are because He's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. He's never going to leave you without His presence. He's always right here with you. He'll go as deep as you will. Find your way back to your seat for a minute. I don't know how long you'll stay there. Maybe not very long. And maybe you don't want to go too far because I brought you some gifts. My brand new worship CD, I Want to Live Holy, Who Wants It? You'll take it. All right. I like it. Brand new. Just first time I've been out with this book came out this week. You can have it. It's too soon to give up. Our story of overcoming depression and what I'm going to be teaching from today is Holy Spirit, the book and the workbook. Holy Spirit, oh, come here. I got something for you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my faith bracelet. It says faith. It's yours. Thank you for now, Pierre. I love you. That's the beauty of getting older. You can kiss men and nobody cares. I'm so happy to be alive. I'm so happy to be with you. I love Pastor Jay and Pastor Christy. I've been knowing them for many, many years. They talk like me. I don't have to interpret. They're from Alabama. I'm from Mississippi. But we have been out in California for 22 years. Um, how many of you have never seen our ministry? My husband was in my ministry before. Let me see so I know how much. Oh, wow. Did y'all just get saved? <laughs> I'm saying that because this is my next month. 
October the 21st, 1974, I got filled with the Holy Ghost. And I've been in full-time ministry since I won Miss America 45 years ago. The Lord is good. And His mercy endures forever. I want to talk to you today about the subject of you're going to manifest in life what you're full of. So whatever it is you're full of is what's going to come out of you. And so the truth is you think you know what you're full of, but what you're full of is what flies out of your mouth when somebody cuts you off in traffic. Um, what comes out of your mouth when you stump your toe in the middle of the night on the way to the bathroom, that's what you're full of. Too many times we hide God so far in our heart that when we get bumped, he's not what comes out first. So I want to talk to you about being so full of the Spirit of God that no matter what happens in your life, that's what comes out. So how can we take the theme of this conference, this Believe Conference, whoever believes in me? Starts with the belief system in Jesus. But let me just show you something through the Word. Can, can I show you some stuff through the Word? I want to talk to you about spiritual warfare um, because that's who I am. I'm a warrior. I'm a spiritual warrior. I know that. You know, if I really dressed the way I am, I would have on combat boots and an evening gown. And it would be a bride's dress. So I'm definitely a warrior bride. I have been most of my life, but life has caused me to have to learn how to use the Spirit of God and the Word of God in my life as weapons of mass destruction to the darkness. The only way you can do that, though, and this is not something people want to hear, but it's the truth, is you have to go through some things. When you go through things, you learn how to fight. You don't learn how to fight reading it in a book. You learn how to fight when you're in a war, and the only way you can win is fight. So when you get into a position and you see this scripture that says out of your belly will flow rivers of living water, here's the issue. Unless the spirit of God is in your belly, he's not going to flow out. The only way he can flow out is if you have invited him in. And being filled with the Holy Spirit doesn't start in believing in the Holy Spirit. It starts in believing in Jesus. Because it says, he who believes in me, this is Jesus talking here in John. When, when the scripture says, if you believe in me, why? Because Jesus was given to the whole world. But the Holy Spirit was given to the church. The Holy Spirit was not given to the whole world. He never will be. He'll never be given to the world. The world will never understand him. And if you're the church and you don't have the power of the Holy Spirit, you may be going to heaven, but you're going to live in hell every day of this earth experience until you get the power of God in your life. You need what Jesus said in John, the scripture that I'm quoting, and you probably already know it from your information that you have, John 7, 38, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. It's not actually talking about my natural abdomen, you have to be careful with women. Your natural abdomen is where you actually give birth from. But unfortunately, women get pregnant with a lot of things that they wind up giving birth to that they were never meant to carry. You get pregnant with bitterness. You get preg pregnant with anger. You get pregnant with hurt. You get pregnant with divorce. You get pregnant with all kinds of mess. You get pregnant with abuse. You get pregnant with all kinds of things. And then eventually you give birth to it. And while you carry it, it's this uh, microchimerism thing that they're now proving that when you carry a baby, anybody been reading about that? When, when you carry a baby, I carried three, I actually carried four babies, gave birth to three. We have a son who's 38. I'm 67 years old. I'm glad to be alive. I have a son who's 34, a beautiful daughter in love, and two amazing grandchildren. I also have a daughter who's in heaven. 
She, she was six years old when she had a brain tumor, and after a year's battle, she went to heaven. And let me just tell you what teaches you who you are. Not always when you get what you want. Sometimes when you don't get what you want, you figure out who you are. Sometimes when you're believing and you're praying and you're expecting and you don't get the outcome you're expecting, you decide, wait a minute, who's still my God? What is my purpose? What am I called to do? You've got to figure out when you don't get what you want, who you are in Christ. And so three months after that, I had colon cancer. Because why? Because I harbored grief. When you keep things that you weren't meant to carry, you're going to give birth to them. And grief birthed out of me as cancer. Not once, but twice. Twice from my colon, and I've had cancer on my face twice. And that's just because the devil hates my face. (laughs) He hates my face. So I get in his with my face all the time. I've been through three windshields with my face. I was crippled from a car wreck when I was 11 years old, told I'd never walk again. My left leg was broken in 32 places and my back was broken. I was sexually abused from the time I was four until I was 14 years old. Let me just tell you something about life. It happens. But when you stand before the Father, there will not be one excuse of things that's happened to you that will be a good enough excuse for you to use in the face of the Father for not choosing victory. I don't care what's happened to you. You don't have an excuse. There is, you may have a million reasons, and when you love Jesus, you gave up every right. You gave up every right to hold on to that hurt, to hold on to that pain, to hold on to that unforgiveness. You gave up every right because of Jesus. And I don't know about you, but it's better to live free than it is to be bound. You can be bound and love Jesus with your whole heart and come up here and worship and give him all the glory and stay bound as long as you choose to. Or you can decide that there's nothing that has a right to hold me. Nothing has the power to hold me. If you're still bound, it's because you let it hold you. You can be free. You just have to choose to be free. You just have to decide your identity is not in what happened to you. I am not a victim. I don't wear it. I don't look like it. I don't sound like it. I'm not a victim. And if you'll figure that out... People will stop treating you like a victim. People only treat you that way because that's how you treat you. But if you treat yourself as the victorious bride warrior that you are, people will treat you that way too. People will only see what you reflect. And since you're supposed to be the mirror image of Jesus... They're only supposed to be able to see him. So we get into, I love the book of John. John 20, 22. Jesus was just resurrected that morning. He goes to the Father. He gets glorified. He comes back. It's just evening. The disciples are hiding. Sounds like the modern day church. And by the way, there's a big difference between being a follower of Jesus and being a disciple. Jesus had thousands of followers and 12 disciples. You've got to decide which one are you going to be. Impartation will never happen to a follower. Impartation happens to a disciple. If you want to carry the DNA of Jesus, you've got to be a disciple. You can't just be a follower. You got to get up close and personal, and you got to let him see you. You got to let him know you. The scripture's really plain. They said, Jesus said, I don't know you. 
They like, but we cast out devils in your name. We got all these people saved. We did all these wonderful works for you. I was in church every Sunday. I was at the altar worshiping, but I don't know you, he said. You see, it doesn't matter that you know him. It matters if he knows you. He doesn't know followers. He knows disciples. So you've got to decide which one are you. So he speaks to his disciples. He doesn't come back and talk to his followers. He comes back and talks to his disciples. And he has a little funny personality. He walks right through the wall just to do it. I mean, he could have used a door, but he didn't. He just walked right through the wall. I think just to say, this is what you're going to get to do in the millennium. You're going to have a glorified body, and you just walk through the wall. It's, I think he's just funny. He likes to laugh, and I think he likes to make us laugh. In fact, this one word's left off, but I really think he walked through the wall and went, boo. But he actually said, peace. And then he said, peace again. And then he said... Now, this is the first thing that Jesus brings to the disciples after he's resurrected. Would you think it might be important? He said, receive the Holy Spirit. His first and primary order, command, receive the Holy Spirit. And first he breathed on them, which I love. Because he is Ruach. He breathed into them. Why? Because they're scared. So he comes in and he, it's as if he lays them down on the floor and he gives them supernatural mouth to mouth. So in the spirit, he breathes on them. It's like they aren't breathing. And so he breathes life into them first. And then he says, receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will not come on you unless you receive him. He will not move into you unless you receive him. This is no religious thing. This is relationship. Jesus was telling them right off the bat, listen, there is more for you. And he'd he'd been teaching them. John 14, he took it apart. Beloved, he told them, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in me, you believe in the Father, I'm going to go away. Thomas freaks out. What? I just began to figure out who you are. Why are you leaving? It's important that I leave because I'm going to send you power. I'm going to send you Holy Spirit. He was saying, you love me, but you don't have any power. We've got an entire culture of American church that loves Jesus and they have no power. It's why we're the sickest, we're the most pitiful. What we have, nobody wants it because it looks contagious and it looks deadly. We should be the happiest, most prosperous, most healed, most victorious people on the planet. We should be 100% registered to vote and we should vote by the Bible. But we would rather complain than take responsibility for a nation. Listen, Jesus said, receive the Holy Spirit, but he breathed on them. So he didn't just say receive. He breathed the life of God in them and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. Now, Holy Spirit was not given for another 50 days. But what was he doing? Humanity, men and women, have an entire spirit being that twins our natural being. We have spirit eyes, we have spirit ears, we have spirit mouth. We, we speak in the spirit. We sing in the spirit. I just did it. We have spirit feet. We have spirit hands. We have a spirit womb. You'll never be able to birth in the spirit what you haven't received in your spirit womb. Jesus was speaking to their spirit womb. He's like, the Holy Spirit is coming. Get your womb ready. Get your spirit man ready to receive the power of God. We treat the Holy Spirit like a passing fancy or like an event or like a conference, or like a service, but the Spirit of God came to move inside of you. Jesus said he's with you, but soon he will be in you. 
and out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Because he's in you, he'll come out of you. Too many people want the spirit of God to flow out of them, but they've never received the spirit of God. He can't flow out of a dry bed in there. You want living waters? You got to receive from the fire hydrant of God. He gives it to you like trying to take a drink of water from a fire hydrant. That's how you receive the Holy Spirit. And you receive him. And then you release your language. Listen, look at Acts 2. I wasn't going to go there, but let's look at Acts 2 really fast. I'm trying to watch my clock. Oh, no, oh, no. Time moves so fast in the spirit. I just, I want you to grasp this if you can. In Acts 1 verse 8, it says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Then Acts 2 verse 2, when suddenly there came a sound from heaven. When you receive the Holy Spirit, your sound changes. You stop talking earth. And you start talking heaven. When you start talking heaven, that's the language you'll speak for all of eternity. Believe it or not, Jesus won't be speaking Aramaic in heaven. You won't be speaking English or Spanish or whatever your native tongue is. You'll be speaking your citizenship tongue of heaven. And you'll be speaking the sound you received when you received the Holy Spirit. I'm not waiting till I get there to get my language. I'd like to practice a few years. Why not be speaking heaven now? Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Cannot flow out of you unless you receive him in. When you receive him in, the language will come with it. And you're like, well, I don't know how to speak in tongues. Speaking in tongues is not the issue. You've got to receive the Holy Ghost. Too many times you're seeking the gift when you should be seeking the giver of the gift. Tongues is not the gift. That's just the sound of heaven that you receive when you receive the Holy Spirit. You also get love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Self-control. You also get the gifts of manifested healings and miracles and discerning of spirits, prophecy, faith. Listen, all of the Holy Spirit moves inside of you and he manifests as He needs to. You're just the instrument. Look at Romans 6, 13. It says, do not yield your instrument. The the AMPC says implement. The Greek says weapon. Do not yield your instrument to wickedness. Rather, yield your instrument to righteousness. That's what happens when you receive the Holy Ghost. You just yield your instrument The only thing in you that makes sound, that's your instrument. It's your breath. That's why he went. He's like, don't breathe your breath anymore. Breathe mine. They went. You receive the breath of life. You exhale the breath of life. Out of your belly will flow rivers. Out of your head will not flow rivers of living water. Your head flows doubt, unbelief, questions, worry, fretting, anxiety, panic. That's what your head flows. So stay out of your head. Get in your spirit. Speak heaven. I'm almost out of time. Oh, my goodness gracious. When I printed this all out, there's like nine pages. I haven't paged. I'm still in paragraph one. The Holy Spirit said, this is your next book. I said, okay, fine. I'll do it. So I want to flip you over as I close to something he showed me just this week. With all of this in mind then, look at Ephesians chapter 6, spiritual warfare. Three years ago, Pastor Jay reminded me of this this morning. Three years ago right now, Pastor Laura, you came over. Uh, Brenda, I think you were there too in the outside the hospital. My husband, we both got COVID. Um, My spirit left my body. I was so sick because this is 
biological weapon designed to attack where you're weak, and I've had colon cancer, so it attacked my abdominal region, and for eight solid days, I lost, I, I couldn't, I have, I have no weight to lose, but I lost uh, 13 pounds, and I couldn't keep anything down, and I was crawling on my hands back to the bed, and I couldn't go any further, and I just stopped and leaned up against the wall, and my spirit just left my body. And I felt it and saw my spirit just leave my body. It's not the first time my spirit's left my body. I've been to heaven before and God sent me back because I'm not finished and I want to hear well done. And so as my spirit left my body, though, I knew it wasn't God and I knew it wasn't my time. And so I just grabbed my spirit and I pulled it back in and I said, I will live and not die. And the moment I said, I will live and not die, the spirit of death just left me just like that. I will live and not, it just left me. But when it left me, the spirit of death is now in my bedroom. And so it just got, my husband was doing fine. It just went right off of me and it went right on to him. And immediately he started dying. Within a few days, I went into mode of taking care of him. And within a week's time, I had to call the ambulance because his oxygen was in the low 70s and I couldn't get it up no matter what I did. And he was out of his mind and he couldn't breathe. And it started a very hard battle. Now I'm tired and I'm worn out because I've had COVID, but I, my spirit man is not tired and my spirit man's not worn out because I've been practicing my spirit man, you see. So it doesn't matter where your flesh is. It doesn't matter what's going on in your body or even how tired your mind may be from a worn through depression. Your spirit man is not either one of those. Your spirit man is your spirit man and it's as strong as you have fed it. And so my spirit man knew, and the spirit of God said to me, go lay down on your bed, put your left ear on the mattress, on the pillow, and ask your commander and chief. He has never, Pastor Jay, he has never called himself to me, commander in chief. But he said, ask commander and chief what you are to do. And so I went and I laid down on the bed and I laid my left ear on the bed. I felt like Ezekiel there for a minute having to lay on one side. Thank God he didn't make me cook on dung, but anyway, whatever. <laughs> so I laid my head down, and when I did, the Spirit of God gave me my first command. And he said, rally the troops, and that's when you heard from me. Rally the troops. I rallied the troops. That's when you heard from me. That's when you all heard from me, and you started praying. And then people just started coming to the hospital. And by the second morning at 5 a.m., my husband and the doctor called me and the doctor said he has one hour to live. Get your sons out of their homes. Get them together. He's going to tell them goodbye. Tell all of you goodbye. And so he starts, he can hardly talk, but he's trying to give us the deathbed talk. And as he's talking, he does his whole spiel. And I said to my oldest son, Harry, do you receive that? And he said, I don't receive that. And I said to my youngest son, do you receive that? And he said, I don't receive that, mom. And so he says in the phone, Dad, I don't receive that. And the doctor's listening, and the Spirit of God says to me, this is why you have to have out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. And you cannot wait until you're in a war to practice. You've got to know what you're doing in peace times, so when more times come, it's automatic response. And so the Spirit of God said to me, Corinthians 7, 4, I didn't, I, I didn't know what that scripture was. I should have known, and I wasn't sure if it was 1 Corinthians or 2. He didn't say that. He just said Corinthians 7, 4. So while my husband and my sons are arguing about his deathbed talk, I went and grabbed my Bible, and I came back, and I opened it up to Corinthians 7, 4. I went to 1 Corinthians first, and it said, For the husband does not own his body, but the wife does. ghost. I, la I started laughing out loud because not in a million years would I have strategically pulled that scripture out to pray for my husband. Not in a million years. But the Spirit of God knew what would work in the court of heaven. The Spirit of God knew 
The Holy Ghost is the co-counsel and he was giving me the defense that I needed that would win. And so I said to my husband, I'm so sorry that you've taken all your breath to give us the deathbed talk, but you're not going anywhere. You don't even own your body. I own your body and you'll live and not die until I say so. And it was a war and it's been a three year war and a three year fight, but I'm telling you, this is who we are. This is who God's made us to be. It's time we take our position. It's time we take our stand. It's time we know who we are in Christ. It's time we draw our swords and we start swinging. Now, let me close with this because I want you to have this. And I don't want you to miss this. Ephesians 6 gives you the pieces of the armor. And he starts with in conclusion. And he says over and over and over again, stand. He says, be strong. Then he says, stand. Then he says, stand again. Then he says, having done all the crisis demands, stand. Then he says, stand again. Then he says, resist the devil. Then he says, stand again, stand, stand. Now, I just want you to understand why that stand word is so important. When Lucifer fell to the earth, he lost his entire covering. I don't even want to call it a body. It wasn't a body. It was nine amazing stones and setting gold. And that was his earth suit. He led worship from Eden before the fall. Scripture says so. And he was leading worship in his stones and sounds and frequencies and timbrels and harps. And he was leading worship. When he fell, he lost his covering. Not just Shekinah, which he did lose, but he lost his nine stones. He was, under the, he was under the Godhead covering of the Holy Ghost. That's why he had nine stones, nine fruit, nine gifts. No time to tell you all that. You can read the book. So here's what happened. He was stripped of that earth suit, and he was given the standing serpent suit. In fact, Revelation 12 called him that age-old serpent. And he stood... And he tempted and he walked the earth in this hideous looking serpent standing up snake. You can't even imagine it. He tempts Eve. God turns when he confronts Adam and Eve. He does not curse Adam or Eve. He does not curse male or female. He first curses the ground. And then he curses Satan for messing with his image. God the Father is always on your side. Even when you screw up, ridiculous, he's always on your side. They literally gave away the right to to have dominion over the earth and God was still on their side. He still wouldn't curse them, but he cursed Satan and he was a standing up serpent at that point. And the curse was you'll lay on your belly the rest of your life. All the days throughout eternity, you are an eternal creature. You don't have an end and you're gonna lay on your belly all the days of your life. In that place in Genesis 3, Satan lost, Pastor Laura, his ability to stand. And that's why when God tells you to stand, get up, stand, 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 stand. Don't lay down, don't roll over, don't turn around, don't walk away. Stand. Two final things. Verse 18. And this is the final two pieces of weaponry that God gives you. Every piece of that armor is to defend you. The helmet, the shoes, the the breastplate, the shield. They're all to defend you. But there's two weapons that are not defensive at all. It's the final two weapons. Verse 18, I'm going to give you the final one and go back and give you the next one. Verse 18 says, pray at all times on every occasion in every season in the Holy Spirit. Pray at all times on every occasion in every season in the Holy Spirit. Pray at all times on every occasion when it's good, when it's bad, when it's awful, when it's great. Pray at all times on every occasion, in every season, in the Holy Spirit. That is not a defensive weapon. 
That is an offensive weapon. When you yield your instrument, do not yield your instrument to wickedness. Rather, yield your instrument to righteousness. Why? Because it's a weapon. Your instrument is a weapon. It's the same word, instrument and weapon in the Greek. Yield your weapon to righteousness. What is righteousness more than the Holy Ghost? Yield your instrument to righteousness. When you do, when you start, you're going boom, boom, boom to the enemy. You're pushing back the darkness, pushing back the darkness. You're not defensively protecting yourself. You're not like this. No, you're like running. You're running with your running. You're pushing. Push. You're taking territory. Go back half a verse in 17. He says, and wield the sword that of the spirit. Let me read it in context. And the sword of the spirit that the sword. Let me ah, slow it down. And the sword that the spirit wields, which is the word of God. Listen, this is a huge revelation to me in the last two weeks. You can say the word of God all of your life and without it being wielded by the spirit of God living in you, it's useless. The spirit wields the sword out of you. You say, in the name of Jesus, I will live and not die. It's like the Spirit of God said that through you. You didn't say that. You said, all things are possible to him who believes. I believe. You're taking that sword and you're boom, 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 swinging it, swinging it back up, darkness. Back up, back up. Get away from me, devil. You have no power over me. You have no power over my children. You have no power over my family. You have no power over my marriage. Back up. Get away. You can't do it. You'll never do it. I have two offensive weapons. And in the name of Jesus. Don't use them without the spirit. Or it'll become religion. Matthew 3, 11. And I'll close with this. John the Baptist said, I baptize with water. Just three or four verses later, Jesus walks off into the water. And John's like, "Mm -mm. mm-mm. Mm-mm, can't do it. But Jesus and John were cousins. John was just six months older than Jesus. That's why when Herod went out to kill all the babies two years old and under, John was six months old, older than that, so his life was spared. Jesus starts coming off in the water, and John's like, "Mm -mm. I know who you are. I can't do it. And Jesus said, I'm fully man. I need to be baptized. I don't have to repent of sin because I don't have any. But I need the heaven nature. And he went under the water. And when he came up, the dove descended upon the lion and the lamb. And triune became his being. And John said, I baptize you in water, but this one that came after me, he's going to baptize you in the Holy Ghost. He's going to baptize you in fire. Fire is not passion. The baptism of fire is not personality. It doesn't help you get over being timid. The baptism of water helps you take on the nature that you confess. Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. I take your DNA to become my DNA. It's like a covenant marriage right there. Jesus isn't coming for a date. He's not coming for an engagement. He's coming for a bride who's already said yes. Who's taken on his DNA and become one with him.
And he's like, but just having my DNA is not enough. I had to have the dove and you need the dove. I'm going to baptize you in the Holy Ghost. And when you receive the power of the Holy Ghost, he moves inside of you. He's not just with you anymore. He moves inside of you. And do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? You are that third temple that the world's watching to be built. You're it. You're already built. Housing his presence. And he will baptize you in fire. That's father's DNA. Your Abba is an all-consuming fire. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm asking you this question first. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is the day, this is the hour, this is why you're here. It doesn't matter if you know his name, does he know yours? Do you have his DNA nature? Because if you don't, you are risking your eternal life. You're going to spend eternity somewhere. Where is up to you? You may say, I've been in church all my life. Been in church all your life no more makes you a Christian than standing in a garage for 50 years will make you a car. You got to make a decision to take on the DNA of a Savior. If you are uncertain, if Jesus is truly your Lord, I just want you to lift up your hand right now where you are. Just lift it up. And as I see it, you can put it back down. Just lift it up. I, I, I want to be sure. I see that hand. 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 All over, I see your hands going. But I want to be sure that Jesus is the Lord of my life. I don't want to just know his name. I want him to know my name. I want the nature of Jesus in my life. If you lifted your hand, just hold it back up again. Just hold it up. This is the safest place you'll ever be in to lift that hand. Lift it up, stand to your feet right where you are. Right where you are, stand to your feet. I don't care. Don't worry about what anybody thinks. This is your first level of getting over yourself. Glory to God. If you're seated, look at your neighbor and ask them, do you, do you want me to hold my hand up with you? I'll do that if you want me to. Just ask your neighbor right now. Are you sure that Jesus is your Lord and Savior? Are you sure? Then hold that hand up and stand with them. Meet me at the altar right now. Quickly, quickly meet me at the altar. Meet me at the altar. We have to settle this. You see, until you settle this, you cannot receive Jesus' promise of the Holy Spirit. First, he must be Lord. First, he must be Savior. First, you, he must know your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Do we have any prayer partners? Well, great, great, great. Wonderful. I'm going to pray with you. And then I'm going to send you with Pastor. Just for a moment. You can, don't worry about your stuff. Right where it is is fine. Nobody's going to take it. I'll, I'll whip them if they do. And we're going to be doing some business still in here. He adores you. He absolutely adores you and set up every moment of your life to get you here today. To heal you and restore you and to make sure that you know, that you know, that you know. Because when you know, the devil cannot talk you out of it. Thank you, Father. Pray with me right now. All of you are at the altar. Say, Father, my life is yours. Jesus I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I believe that you are the Son of God and that you came to this world for me to be my Savior, to pay the price for my sins. Right now, this day, it's settled, it's sealed. I belong to Jesus 
and Jesus belongs to me. I take the nature of Jesus and he takes my sin and cleanses me from all unrighteousness. In the name of Jesus, I am born again, eternal. Heaven is my home. And when I leave here, I'm going there. If you prayed that prayer, I want you to just turn to your right, Pastor, because I got one more call to make. You're going to oh, turn to your left and go that direction. Let's, let's do a little shout like the angels are doing. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Jesus, oh Jesus, oh how we love you, oh how we love you. He breathed on them and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you do not have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, there's no way on earth that you're gonna, out of your belly will flow rivers that are not in there. But if you'll receive the Holy Spirit, He is the living water. He is the one that continually bursts up. He is the continual artesian well that never runs dry. He's the one who's always with you. He's the one who will never leave you. Jesus plainly said, I'm leaving you. But He said, I'm sending you one that'll never leave you. So when you say Jesus will never leave me, no, he did. He left you. But he sent you one that will never leave you, the Holy Spirit. And so if you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, but you want to be, I'm asking you to meet me right here. Meet me right here. Is it okay, Pastor? Listen, that's what this whole belief conference is about today. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. If you don't have your prayer language... If you don't pray in tongues on a regular basis, this altar's for you right now. This is not some freaky thing. This is not some emotional thing. This is not some soul realm thing. This is spirit to spirit. I mean, I love the soul. It's where our mind is, where our will is, where our emotions are. We women love that realm. But it's not who we are. We have a soul, but we are a spirit. And our spirit needs power. And our spirit needs voice. And our spirit needs the sound of heaven to come forth. But we can't have the sound of heaven without having heaven inside of us. So let me tell you about receiving the Holy Spirit. It's yours. Father sent him for you because Jesus asked him to. Jesus says, I'm going to ask the Father and he's going to send you the Holy Spirit. He didn't say he'll send the Holy Spirit to some of you. He didn't say he'll send the Holy Spirit to that one generation. He said, he's going to send you the Holy Spirit. And if you receive the Holy Spirit, the Godhead moves inside of you. That's the scripture that says, if you go to hell, he goes with you. You can't be separated from him. If you go back to the bar, guess what? He gets to go with you. If you do something idiotic, guess what? He's right there with you. Because he won't be separated from you. He promises you. He'll never leave you. And he'll never forsake you. But it'll be the first time in your life when you do something stupid like that. You know it. Because he's with you and he cares about your future. And the evidence of speaking in tongues is truly the evidence. It is, but it is also the sound of heaven. It's the language that Lucifer lost when he fell. So when you pray in tongues, he has no clue. He can't interpret that. He can't interpret that. 
And it's the only way you can do that piece of the armor. Pray at all times, in every occasion, in every season. The only way you can do that is in the Spirit. And here's the truth. You can receive the Holy Spirit and He can be right here in you. And you can still not give Him your instrument and He'll still be praying in you. There just won't be any sound of heaven coming out because He's in there. But if you'll give Him your instrument, here's what happens. The moment the sound of heaven hits your instrument, it becomes power in your life. What's going to happen? You'll receive the Holy Spirit and you'll feel Him. And if... if even when I'm not giving voice, I'm hearing. He's praying for me all the time. He never stops praying for me. But the moment I give him voice, now the power of God comes out of me and comes into my universe. The kingdom of heaven becomes a reality to my life. So let me just tell you a few things about praying in the spirit. He will not make you do it. You're not a jiggle doll. He's not going to grab you by the shoulders and shake you till tongues fall out. He won't do that. He puts it in your belly. Your instrument's up to you. You see, right now, Pierre's playing that piano. Take your fingers off of it for a second. It's an instrument. It's doing absolutely nothing until someone plays it. You're the instrument and you're in charge of it. If you want the Spirit of God to pray through you, you've got to allow Him. There are things that you have that make sound. Now, keep your mouth completely closed. Completely closed. Don't use your tongue or your breath or your lips or your teeth. Don't use any of that. And speak English to me right now. Don't keep your mouth shut. Don't use your breath or your tongue or your teeth or your lips and talk to me. Come on. Ah, you can't even speak English without all of your things that make sound. So if you say, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit, I want to speak in tongues and you do this. He's praying, but you're not. If you want him to pray through you, you've got to give him your sound. He's not going to filter it through your head. He'll never filter the spirit through your head. You know why? You would screw it up royally. He prays out of you. It's your way to worship in spirit and truth. John 4, Jesus was talking to the woman at the well. The woman nobody else would even talk to. And when John 4, Jesus was talking to that woman, he said out, he called out all of her life to her. And then he talked to her about worship. We are so conditioned to think that worship's about music, instruments, voices, singing. But there at the well that day, where was the band? Where were the singers? He gave her the most incredible revelation of worship. He said, Father, listen, you know what's happening right now? All your daddy issues are being settled. He's settling your daddy issues. He said, Father, Abba, the one who will never hurt you, the one who's never going to abuse you, the ne one who's never going to touch you where he shouldn't touch you, Father. He stands up off his throne and he looks the whole earth over looking for your instrument to worship him in spirit and truth. He's been looking for you. The enemy's tried to tell you your sound is awful. The enemy's tried to tell you, don't say anything. Don't sing. Don't make noise. You, don't, you, you shouldn't do that. Just be silent. All the enemy hopes he can do is talk you into being silent. But if you refuse to be silent, if you refuse to be shut down in the Spirit, if you give the Spirit of God your voice, the power 
power of God is going to start flowing through you. Are you ready? Are you ready? Close your eyes, lift both your hands in the air and say, Father, I ask you to give me the Holy Spirit who is promised to me by Jesus. Jesus, baptize me. Completely immerse me in the Holy Spirit right now. I yield my breath, my tongue, my lips, my mouth, my vocal cords to the Spirit of God right now. Pray in tongues. Out of your belly will flow rivers. Out of your belly will flow rivers. Le kosoria bakaset yeha. Hey, come open your mouth. Breathe. Lord, es idio bakosoria bakaset. Open your mouth. Breathe. Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive. Receive. Breathe in. Open your mouth. You can't speak English with your mouth closed. There it is right there. That's it. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Use your instrument. Breathe in. When you breathe out, pray in tongues. That's it right there. Louder. Spirit, no English, spirit. Get out of your head. Get out of your head in your spirit. Get out of your head in your spirit. Begin to pray for them that out of their being will flow rivers of living water. Begin to pray that they'll receive. Begin to lift them up and intercede. Pray it out. That's it. Let out all the pain. That right now, that out of their innermost being will flow the rivers of living water. Jesus said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive in the name of Jesus. Receive in the name of Jesus. You are just, op- just open your mouth and begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Woo. Yes. Yes. God is moving in this place. Jesus is baptizing people in the Holy Ghost and fire. I see ladies being baptized. Woo. Yes. Jesus, you are the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. Release all the pain when you pray. Release all the pain when you yes. pray. Yes. Be Have healed your way. while you pray. Be healed while you pray. Receive your healing while you pray. Yes. Woo. Receive in the name of Jesus. 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 You're being filled right now. You're being filled right now. Woo. 
yes 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 receive in the mighty name of Jesus receive in the mighty name of Jesus thank you Lord for baptizing people in your spirit tonight ladies today I mean in your spirit mighty Jesus Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Fire of God. Fire of God flowing in these ladies. Yes. Yes. A portela e a boca rebeça para mim. Yes. Thank you God. Oh, stir yourself up. Mm. Thank you God. Woo. Yes, thank you Jesus. release all that pain and hurt when the spirit of God's coming out of you all of that you need healing of can happen while you're praying in tongues he can heal your heart he can heal your emotions he can heal your mind he can heal your depression just release the power of God to flow through you and watch all the things that bound you turn you loose yes yes receiving miracles people are being baptized in the Holy Spirit I see ladies being filled with the Holy Spirit I see God touching them in powerful ways miracles are happening right now breakthroughs are happening right now deliverance is happening right now broken hearts are being healed team I want you to come in and begin to minister to these ladies as well begin to help pray for these ladies